For number three, we needed to first distribute. I know this is going back to two units ago. The number on the outside to the number inside. So we would have 6 plus 32x minus 56. This is really a negative 1. Minus, uh, sorry, negative 2x minus 1. Combine all of your x's together. So if you didn't do it this way, be fixing this. You have two x's and then a bunch of constants. So 32 minus 2 would give us 30. x, 6 minus 56 is negative 50. Negative 50 minus 1 is negative 51. That should have been your final answer. Any others we wanted to go over before we talk about our notes, Victoria? Uh, two. two. Anyone else wanted to see two? Okay. So we'll do two, and then that'll be it. For number two, we this is a cube group, but you're just evaluating, putting these in. So negative four times the cube root of 125 plus use parentheses and put negative 2 in. We know that the cube root of 125 is what? 25. This would become a positive 4. Negative 4 times 5 would give us negative 20. We add 4, we get negative 6. That should have been our final answer. So as I mentioned before, we're going to go over one or two of each time we do these. Um, make sure your work and answers are on the answer sheet because when after we've done five, I'm going to collect your answer sheet, go over it, grade it, and give it back to you. It'll be informative, so not in the grade book. Um, and I'll drop the lowest score, so like if you're absent one day, that won't count. Or if you had to get a new... Uh, answer sheet today and don't have it from the first time, that'll get dropped. Okay. Um, before we talk about notes, uh, look at your calendar. There's one thing I want to point out, one thing we need to fix. One, um, where it says Wednesday 10 12, that's a PSAT day, so I most likely won't see you. Um, so, whatever it says for that day is going to get moved to the following Friday. The benchmark day, the Tuesday 10 18, that day is staying a flex day, so nothing will change there. Um, so, that means your quiz day will get moved one, your test day will get moved one. So, after that, I would see you again, supposed to be that Monday, the 31st. But you guys don't have school that day, so it'd be November 1st is your test day for this unit. Um, so I'll change those dates on Cal on Canvas. Yep. 10-18. Um, Notice that it says benchmark. So those of you that wanted to retake unit 1 and need to retake unit 2 will take that retake that day. If you have all of your retake stuff done. If it's not done, then you'll need to get it done before or after school, um, and I'll set a date. So after that date in class, you'll have to get it done before or after school, otherwise your grade will stay as is for the quarter. Questions on anything I just said? So if you've not gotten your unit one retake stuff done yet, you should be in my office hours, before school, after school, or doing this on the flex day, um, getting all of that done, as well as once I finish grading unit two, if you need to retake that, getting all of that retake work done as well.
Okay. Um, you have a little blue book. It's a review book. That is for you to have to use whenever. Um, if you feel like you need more practice, like you get it, but you just want more practice. One, five, thirty. If it rings again in five minutes, we'll go. If not, we'll just go. We'll see. Um, and what were you saying? If you feel like you get it, but you just need more practice, there are practice problems in there. If you're not really getting it and maybe more practice would help you, there's more problems in there. If you want to come see me with those problems, you have that. Um, whether you use it or not is up to you. At the end of this unit, when I do binder checks, I will be looking for that. So make sure you keep that. If you ever lose it, I do have extras. So this unit is on exponent rules and polynomial operations. So we talked a little bit about some exponent rules, like when we were multiplying radicals and had to multiply the variables, but we were adding the exponents, and I just said, just go with it for now. Now we're going to actually talk about those rules and why. Um, this unit will have three objectives. One. Can we classify polynomials slash write them in standard form, as well as simplifying uh, things using exponent rules and then polynomial operations? No. You did not. That's probably why I have so many extra. So on your notes, find this page. I'm going to show you this part so you can fill it in. As you are writing, I'm going to talk through that. So for polynomials, the definition of that is an expression consisting of many terms. When we talk about standard form, it must be written in alphabetical order with the highest exponents first. So we're going to talk about exactly what that means. So if you have one variable, you would put them in decreasing exponent order. So 3, 2, 1, 0. If you have multiple variables, you would make sure it's in alphabetical alphabetical order first and then deal with the exponents. So we'll talk about some examples like that here in a bit. The highest exponent is called the degree. So whatever exponent is the highest, that is the degree you're going to classify it by. You should all have this table, those tables, and each thing determines what they are. So if you're looking at your highest exponent, if you don't see one at all, and it's just a number by itself, not a variable at all, that's going to be your constant. So like 7 here has an exponent, has a variable exponent of 0, but the variable's not there, which is why it's 0. If you have an x term without an exponent, it's assumed to be 1. So that would be linear, no matter what. <laughs> and then if you see an actual exponent, then it's quadratic, cubic, quartic. In algebra 2, you'll learn others. And then number of terms is actually counting how many terms you have. So if you just have 1, that's a monomial. 2 would be binomial three trinomial, and then this would be a polynomial. So those prefixes mean the same thing, one, two, and three. I feel like the bell's going to ring, but I don't know. Anyone still need this? 
So this next part, we're going to classify each of these by the degree, so use the table, and the number of terms. For this one, it doesn't have an x, and we know numbers by themselves are usually constants. If you want to write what the exponent is, so, you, so it helps you remember, you can do that. This has an exponent of 0. What that really means is there's a variable that has an exponent of zero, which is why it's not there. So because of that, this would be a constant. How many terms do we have? One, so that would be a monomial. Here, look for your variable, look for your highest exponent. You don't see it, but there's a one there. So because we have a variable that we see, even though we don't see the one, this would be linear. Anything with x that you don't see the exponent for is linear. How would we classify the number of terms? monomial because this is just one term even though there are multiple things there being multiplied together. What is the degree for number three? Alex? Linear, again. And the number of terms. Victoria? Binomial, because it has two things. Okay. And then the degree for number four. Hannah? You're really close. This cubic would be three, but this is two, so it would be quadratic. Um, And then number of terms, Victoria? Trinomial, because we have three terms. Degree for number five? Cubic. And number of terms, Victoria? Binomial again, because there's only two. And then degree for number six. Victoria. Not quadratic. Look at the highest exponent. That's quartic. Because our highest exponent is four. So that would be quartic. And then number of terms. Yep. You like math it and then it. Okay, so these can be any um, variation of any of those. You just have to pay attention to highest exponent and number of terms. You do have to know these. So if you, um, after we finish this, if you need more practice, I don't know if there's any in this packet. Um, when I made it. But there are some on the Khan Academy that'll be due next week, the polynomial intro, as well as if you have so signed up for Delta Math, you can be trying that there as well. Right. This next part, we're going to write these in standard form. So in um, alphabetic order with highest exponent going first. Let's do this. Right, so 
If we are putting this in standard form, look for your highest exponent first. So which term would go first? The quadratic, quadratic term, or so two x squared, and then what would go next? So we're going in decreasing exponent order. Alex, three x, the three x, whatever sign it is, make sure that carries over, and then our one. So that would be this in standard form. What would go first for number eight? Seven x cubed, and then x squared. X squared, and then major, and then last would be our sixty-four. Question so far. Sometimes it'll look like it's in order already, but there might just be one or two changes. So for number nine, what goes first? Emma? X cubed. And then really? 5x squared. 5x squared. And then clean. The negative x. Sometimes they won't have every single exponent, like they'll skip some. It could be like x to the fifth, and then x, and then a constant. It could be something like 10. It just depends. So what would go first for 10? Christian? X cubed. X cubed, but negative x cubed. And then x then our 24. Okay, 11 is, 11 and 12 is a little different. Because I have multiple, multiple variables, we're still doing ABC order. So we have to look at whatever would come first, ABC wise, so A cubed. Then we're still doing ABC order we have A and B together, so that would come next. And then we're looking at decreasing exponents for A. So it would be 5A squared, B squared. Then our 2AB. Then we would go on to negative 2B. So the confusing part about this is you see an exponent of 3, so you want to move that to the beginning, but it shouldn't be that way. So here, if I'm looking at my a's, it starts at 3, it goes to 2, it goes to 1, and then it's at 0. The a's decrease, and then we started at b, um, and then it, um, it didn't really decrease or increase, but we had to go in order of A first and then deal with B. So for 12, what would go first? Negative X cubed. And then? Um, Negative seven x squared y squared, and then plus five y cubed, plus five y cubed, and then our thirteen at the end. All right, so you have to be able to know how to put those in standard form, as well as classify them. Um, we're going to talk about bases for a second and then actually talk about the exponents uh, before we get into this so that we know what a base is. This, the 13, would be your base. The 3 is your exponent or your power. We don't have to write that part. Sorry. 
So when we talk about negative bases, um, negative bases raised to an even power will always be positive. But we have to use parentheses. So we've seen this a lot, especially when we were evaluating. If we use parentheses like negative 2 squared, we know that's the same thing as negative 2 times negative 2, which is why we end up with a positive. But if we don't use parentheses, like if you were to put it in your calculator without parentheses, This ends up being a negative 1 times your 2 squared, which is why you end up with a negative. So, if we have a negative base, we should always be using parentheses. That way it comes out positive. Um, use parentheses regardless, but negative base with an even power, I should clarify. However, if we have a negative base raised to an odd power, it'll be negative no matter what we do. So if I said negative 2 to the third, that would be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So the first two would make it positive. But when I multiply it again by a negative, it becomes a negative. So regardless, I'm going to get a negative. If I didn't use parentheses, it would be similar to what we just did up here, where this is really like negative 1 times 2 to the third. We know 2 to the third is 8, so this would still become a negative 8, no matter what. So if you have an odd power, whether you use parentheses or not doesn't really matter, but if you have an even power, you should be using parentheses, especially with negative exponent, negative basis. Negative exponents, though, are different. Can you tell me this part? Okay. So we're going to talk about this and then talk about the actual rule. So here, if I were to expand this, 0 squared is 0 times 0, which would give us we can all say it out loud. Zero. One squared would be one times one, which would give us one. Two squared would give us four. And three squared would give us nine. So we, those are things we know already. What the rule says with negative exponents is that math magic comes in and happens. That we take whatever the base is, and we flip it. So all of these are over 1 right now. We just don't see that one. We're going to take that and flip it. And then make the exponent positive, but move it to the denominator with the number. So 0 to the negative 2 would look like, I'm taking this, I'm flipping it. And I'm raising it to a positive exponent. That would always happen, no matter what. You take it, you flip it, and you make it positive. We know 0 squared is 0. Put that in your calculator. See what happens. Yes. So you should get error, can't divide by zero. For all intents and purposes, we're just going to say that's undefined. We can't divide by zero. So this is going to give us a special case answer. For the next one, this is again over one. We know that one squared is one. So this would still just end up being one. So the negative exponent doesn't really work for the ones. Where you really start to see the change is other numbers. Because here, this will become 1 over 2 squared. We know 2 squared is 4. 
So it was really like I took this answer and I flipped it. So what do we think 3 to the negative 2 would become? Nature. One ninth. So it's really easy to do with numbers. Variables, it's the same process, but it looks a little different. So we're still using this rule. So if I had variables like a squared, if I were to expand that out like I did earlier, you have a times a, but I don't know what a is, so I'm just going to combine it back. So really, we don't have to expand it for this one. x to the third would be x times x times x. d to the first would just be d. y to the fifth would be y times y times y times y times y. I think I said that five times. So if we're applying this rule to it, we're going to take this. These are also over 1. We did not see it. We're going to take the base and flip it and make the exponent positive. So a to the negative 2 would become 1 over a squared x to the negative third would become what? Victoria. X. But one over that, yes. So we're not just making the exponent positive, but we're also flipping it. So it has to be a fraction if it wasn't before d to the negative 1 would become um, 1 over d. You could put 1 over d to the first, or just leave it as 1 over d, doesn't matter. And then y to the negative fifth. Lily? Before we do some practice problems, we're going to talk about zero exponents. So this is, this is the rule for your negative exponents. On the next page, I'm going to talk about the rule, yes, and then um, a special case. So first, the rule says when zero is the exponent, the answer is almost always one. We're going to find when it's not one. So first, pick whatever number you want. In your calculator, raise it to the zero power. So you can do that by doing uh, whatever number you want, carry it, and raise it to the zero power. So this button, and then raise it to the zero power. What do you get? Mm -hmm. One. Which we all should, unless we put in a negative number, then it would be negative one. So any number, except for negatives, will give you a one. But there are some instances where that's not the case. So in this table, I'm going to talk about the pattern that's happening. So if I had 2 to some exponent, let's say 3, 2, and 1, and then 0. 2 to the third, we know is 8. 2 to the fourth, uh, sorry, second, we know is 4. 2 to the first, we know is 2. In this table, I can say that we're dividing each of these by 2. So it would make sense that when I divide by 2, I get 1. And that rule applies. Okay. 10 to any power. 10 to the third is 1,000. 10 squared is 100. Here I'm dividing by 10 each time. So again, it makes sense that at the bottom I get 1. If I have a negative exponent in parentheses, here I have an odd exponent. So I get a negative number, even exponent. So I get a positive. But regardless, each time I'm dividing by negative 3. So again, it still makes sense I get 1. But if I had something like 0 to a power, 0 to any power is 0. So I'm not really dividing by 0 here. But it says that it should be 1. 
So there's an issue. If we were looking at it from another perspective, anything to the zero should be one. So in that aspect, this should be one, but it should also be zero, and it can't be both. So in your calculator, put zero to the zero power. And you get an error. We can't do it. So we're just going to call that undefined. If you have a zero to the zero power, it would be undefined. But besides that, it'll be one. Unless you put in a negative base and don't use parentheses. So write this down somewhere on that page. Negative bases raised to the zero power, if parentheses aren't used, will equal negative one. So your answer when you raise anything to a zero exponent should be one, excuse me, unless you have a negative base and don't use parentheses, then you get a negative one, or unless it's zero, then it's undefined. But for the most part, we're not going to deal with negative bases that don't have parentheses, so your answer should be one. Still writing it down? Now let's do some practice problems. Um, so if I said, what is 5 to the 0 power? 1. Negative 2 to the 0 power? Now we're using parentheses. Would it be negative? It would be positive. 1.02 to the 0 power? 1. One third to the zero power. One. The answer should always be one. Even if I say like, what is a million to the zero power? One. If I start speaking nonsense and said like apple to the zero power, still one. No matter what you put in there, the entire alphabet to the zero power, one. Always one. All right. So if you want to write this rule, I know it was on the last page, but Fill in this box. Any base to the power of zero equals one. Asterisk, unless it's negative and parentheses aren't used, but you don't have to write a lot. Still need that. Okay. Let's do some practice with negative exponents. If you see a negative exponent, you should be wanting to change it. So for like number one, is this negative three going to everything? Like is it being applied to everything? No. Just the x. So the x is the only thing that's going to change here. So I would break this as 4y, everything is being multiplied, times, if I were to change x to the negative third, what would that look like? How would I use the rule, Victoria? 1 over x cubed. So what happens after you do that is you have to combine everything into one fraction. This is really over 1. So if I multiply across, I have 4y over x to the third. What you could also do is if you see like everything's in the same line and you see something with a negative exponent, that is going to immediately go to your denominator and it's going to end up in a fraction. So whether you separate it or immediately jump to this, it doesn't matter.
How would I rewrite number two? No. One over four to the third power. Then I would actually figure out what is four to the third power. What would that give us? Sixty-four. So this would be one over sixty-four. There's nothing else I can do with that. It's simplified. In number three, there are instances where the negative exponent is already in the bottom. So if we were using our rule, our base is 1 over w. So if I take that base and I flip it, now it's w over 1, and I still make that exponent positive. So anytime you are negative, it's already in your denominator. You're just going to move it to your numerator or make it not a fraction. So I'm going to, um, I'll do it separated and then I'll do it just going into it. For this one, we can do 7 squared now or we can wait to the end, that part doesn't matter. We do need to change s to the negative 4. So if I were to change this first, this would look like 7 squared times 1 over s to the fourth times t squared, if you're writing everything out. In our numerator, we would have 7 squared. I'm going to go ahead and figure out what that is. And t squared. I should have wrote this over here. And then in our denominator, we have s to the fourth. My S's sometimes look like 5, but it is an S. So you could do it separately like that. Or, if you wanted to go straight into it, we know 7 squared is 49. S squared has to, or sorry, to the fourth has to get moved to the bottom. And T squared would stay in your numerator. So you could go straight into it without doing the in-between step, but it's your preference. Right, we're going to do one more of these, and then I'll let you practice some. For number six, there's a lot of things in here we need to change. Uh, four to the third, y to negative two, three to negative two, z to negative six. If you have something that's already in fraction form, what I would do is just start switching things. So the Y needs to go down, the 3 needs to go up, the Z needs to go up. So we have 4 to the 3rd times 3 squared times X to the 3rd, because that was already up there, that would move. Z to the 6th would also be up in the numerator. The only thing that would be in our denominator is y squared. Then we can start to simplify. 4 to the third we found out earlier is 64. We know 3 squared is 9. The rest of the variables and exponents stay the same. What is 64 times 9? You will have your calculator for this test as these numbers can get big really fast. So 576 x to the third z to the sixth over y squared. Do we want to see 5 before I let you guys practice? Yes. Okay. So similar. We need to change 2 to the 5th. You can do that now or later. It doesn't matter. 
We do need to move the a to the third, a to the negative third up, because it's already in the denominator. So moving things, we'd have two to the fifth, a to the third, the c would stay. The only thing in our denominator would be the b that was already there. Two to the fifth is what? 32. So 32, a to the third, c, all over b would be our final answer. A. Is it A? Okay. I'm going to give you some practice problems on the next page. You can try others outside of these. Um, let's see. One. Six. Ten. There's going to be more than what we usually do because you can do these relatively quickly. Uh, Fifteen. Any others you can do if you so choose. Right? After you finish those, raise your hand, I'll come around and I'll check them.